assistant coach will teach you judo. He told us to explore the samurai roots of judo and then return to Tokai for a match against his champ, Yasutaka Okawa. With a combined record of 10 and 1, Okawa has been ranked third in the entire country. Well, we got one of the top fighters from one of the top teams in all of Japan in judo. I think we might be in just a little bit of trouble. Yeah, they referred to him as Mr. If the teachers are calling him Mr., that's a lot of respect. Like in MMA, all judo matches begin from the standing position, so mastering a throw is vital. A good, clean throw will not only take an opponent down to the mat, it can also begin and end a fight in one stunning move. I've trained a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and have used moves like these in my MMA fights. Yes. That's the potential. The potential? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> But these guys are already showing us how much more technique there is to learn. And little things like how many degrees to turn your hips or exact placement of your feet can make a huge difference. Nowhere was that principle more apparent than a throw Tokai champs are famous for, Uchimata. But Uchimata is uh, one of the most uh, difficult techniques in the judo. You want to play that? Sure. One, two, and three. To execute the Uchimata, a judoka grabs an opponent and pulls, off-balancing him and giving him a forward momentum. Then he twists his hips and inserts his thigh beneath his opponent's center of gravity. Then he lifts his thigh while still pulling forward and throws his opponent over his hip and onto the mat. The throw works just like a crowbar, where your leg is the lever and your hip is the fulcrum. The trick is positioning your body in just the right place. If you're just an inch off the placement of your thigh and hip, the amount of energy needed to throw an opponent can more than double. But performed correctly, Uchimata requires almost no energy, yet it can deliver up to 5,000 pounds of force. If it weren't for the mat, a throw like Uchimata would be enough to cause serious injury or even paralysis. One, two, Fast learner. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great move. If you can get it, if you can remember all the things you gotta do and throw your leg back and twerk the right way, I mean, it's really impressive. The guy goes right over. This throw could get us through the standing phase of the judo match. But we haven't even begun to learn the ground fighting techniques that will help us take on a judo champ. To do that, we're headed for a crash course in the down and dirty chokes used by the samurai to kill on the battlefield. We're exploring the back streets of Tokyo in search of a one-of-a-kind institution. The Koto Gakusha Judo Boarding School. Graduates of the school have won 12 world championships. Bill and I are hoping they can teach us a few dominant ground techniques to help us in our fight. And just like in MMA, groundwork is key. Chokes, pins, and joint locks. Brutal moves derived directly from the killing art of samurai jiu-jitsu. Samurai training began at home, usually around age five. It focused on the traditional weapons of the sword and the bow, as well as jujitsu, but the sons of wealthy families were sent to special academies called ryus to master the warfare arts that would define their lives. At the ryus, there was one main thing on the curriculum: battle. This same tradition is alive today at Koto Gakusha Boarding School. What should we watch out for with Sensei? Well, he's a pretty strict guy, and he likes to read a rough practice, so I'll be ready to work. The opening exercises confirmed that these guys meant business. Keep your head low and your butt down. Get There's snipers in those trees. Oh, yeah. 
Exercises like these are designed to improve muscle strength, loosen up tight joints, and increase flexibility. Three critical components necessary to survive the hours of punishment judokas endure. I dare anyone to come try this for a couple hours and say it's not hard work. I've been on professional football fields and big wrestling ranks. I need a warm up for this warm up. He says that uh, Bill probably can't pin him. Bill, you, you can't pin him. That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> The principles of judo are a lot different than wrestling. It's basically everything that you were taught not to do in wrestling, you do in judo. A lot of the bad habits, like high hips and laying on your back, that's perfect technique in judo. So it's very hard to make that transition. I think Jason's having an easier time because he has a jiu-jitsu background. My Brazilian jiu-jitsu training is coming in handy. The way I use my body and many of the throws and locks are very similar. It's easy to see that Judo and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu evolved from the same true samurai warfare. But in Japan, the split between Judo and Jiu-Jitsu began with the end of the samurai. In 1852, the arrival of Commodore Perry's steamships confronted the Japanese with the vastly superior naval technology of the West. It became clear that the fighting style of the samurai couldn't survive the modern world. The point was made brutally clear during the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877, when an army of 30,000 samurai faced off against the Western-trained army of the Emperor Maiji. Nearly every one of the samurai was killed. With the end of the samurai, jiu-jitsu fell out of favor in Japan to be replaced by the more scientific judo. But old school jiu-jitsu didn't vanish entirely. It survived in a few isolated dojos and in other parts of the world where samurai and their descendants settled. Especially Brazil, where the Gracie family was taught jiu-jitsu from a Japanese immigrant and turned the art into one of the foundations of modern MMA. And in MMA, one of the most famous techniques is called ground and pound. It's all about getting dominant position, just like on the battlefield or the pin in judo. At the school, we warmed up by getting into and trying to get out of various pins. Even though he's much smaller than me, he uses his dominant position and counterweight of his legs to keep me on my back. This kind of groundwork is incredibly grueling. You ever see when a T-Rex grabs a human being by the top half and their legs are swinging out? That's what Jason looked like just now. Woo, that was a lot of work to get to the back. Bill, it's your turn. This guy is giving a clinic in the physics of judo. No matter what I do, my brute strength isn't enough to overcome the advantage this guy has by using his legs as a lever to keep me down. He's very strong for a little guy. Look at the size difference, though. He's as thick as Bill's leg. Very strong, though. It's all about leverage. You got to take the thought of.